Urbanization is now the norm. The world is just uh, an urban place and uh, all the trends are showing us urbanization as the future and the present. City growth is 1.5 million people a week, which is almost unbelievable to, to comprehend. It's mostly in low and middle income countries, in southern Africa and in Asia. The rapid urbanization, or at least urban growth, it really gives people a possibility to access services, to education, uh, to have a modern lifestyle. There's education, there's culture, there's art, there's food, there's water, there's job opportunities, all those are the reasons why cities are growing, because they are fundamentally very good things. Urbanization brings economic development, opportunities, but when urbanization is haphazard and unplanned, as it is in many of the less developed countries in the world, this is when it brings risks. Political will to see rapid urbanization as a genuine uh, development issue is, a, is an ongoing challenge, and that's seen through the lack of resourcing that's provided to um, urban development and the lack of policy commitment in a lot of places. Because it's going too quickly, the services can't keep up, the education facilities can't keep up, and the government itself uh, can't govern effectively. Unless we can actually put in water systems and energy systems at the same pace that cities are urbanising, then millions of people are going to be left without, unable to meet their basic needs. And that's why we have so many people living in poverty in informal settlements. Not only are there deficits in basic public goods and services for the urban poor, but that the wealthy often rely on private services. For example, they rely on private services for even water. And thus they extract themselves from the public sphere and make it less accountable. And when it's not accountable to the wealthy, we have a problem in making sure that governance is accountable for all. The thing that worries me is the politics of exclusion. Uh, that there's a lot of people coming to the city, so the cities are growing incredibly rapidly, but they're not engaged in shaping that city because they're in squatter settlements or they're technically conducting illegal work on the streets. And the fact that people are really struggling to find livelihoods hoods to look after their households and their families and that's particularly true for the women. Rapid urbanization is actually increasing the hazards and risk to health because it's creating these vast informal settlements and not only do they not have access to the health services that they need, they have a dual burden of chronic diseases now that they're living in a different type of economic environment. They're people who deserve basic human rights and if you come from that angle then we need to treat the city differently and see the city differently. And we need to understand power relationships and governance and how the city is made. The challenge for us is to make sure that those people get access to the services and, and the financing they need to be able to build their assets and to make better lives. The majority of the world's population live in urban environments. I think that the massive change that we're going to see over the next 20 years is failure of a lot of urban environments, a complete failure. Cities are expanding into areas that are exposed to a range of hazards and it's particularly low-income people who have very poor quality houses who are living in places where they're facing landslides or flooding or sea level rise. We talk about the million people earthquake uh, we talk about cities disappearing underwater. Um, I think these things are very real. Um, I think they're going to manifest by very large movements of people. And in some ways we're already seeing it with the migrations that you're seeing in Latin America um, and across Europe from the Middle East. The bottom line is the, the rich are getting richer and the, the poor are getting poorer and their access to basic human rights uh, is getting uh, reduced and reduced. The the best case is that we recognise the need to transition to a lower carbon economy, to design cities differently and to change the way in which we consume energy and transport and to harness that change in a way that really improves people's lives and their well-being in cities. If we can actually start thinking creatively about rapid urbanisation, we can actually do things differently rather than repeat the mistakes of the past. The world does have a chance to get it right when it comes to rapid urbanization, but we do need to act, we need to take it seriously, we need to sort out how things are managed. It's collective action, it's working together, and it's above all listening to those most affected. And it's for that reason we're having the conversations now.